all right well um <laughs> well guys uh how you been i <laughs> last week i had some family stuff come up uh, let me see if i can adjust uh come on uh, what else um last week had some family stuff come up so i was taking a look at that uh and then and then this week i'm trying to be good about having like not not just going and buying a bunch of camera gear right um I have a nice Nikon DSLR uh, that I use to make like the recorded videos, but I haven't yet figured out how to, without buying additional stuff, um, how to take that and use that as a like a you know live streaming video camera. So I've been using uh, my iPhone case and uh, this delightful little thing. This is a lens by Moment. You'll notice that. Uh, Ooh, maybe I can even show you. Um, this is a 18 millimeter lens, and that when you hold it up here, ooh, 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 right, you get a much wider view. <sighs> wider view with all sorts of fisheye effect. Um, but as I was putting that on tonight, uh, let's see if you can capture that. Oh, that little flange right there, right? Uh, right here you can like see the part like hang off. <laughs> oh my life um so i've got this delightful uh and really handy little lens here and it's unusable <laughs> because uh because the case is broken um so uh i'll have to look actually maybe there's someone online who figured out how to make like a 3d printed version uh, but my, my case is, the, the case is kind of dying. Um, it's a, it's a great little case. Uh, I did wonder if this was uh, metal up here confirmed. It is not. It's just a heavier duty plastic, some ABS or something. So, um, you also notice that I am not going to wear headphones for this evening. I'm just, I don't know that it matters. So, um, I did uh, just finish up printing this little gizmo. And I printed one before, uh, but you'll see the differences. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, maybe you won't. Hold it up this way. There you go. You can see that there's a difference in height there. Not sure why you can see the pattern a lot more on this one, the infill pattern. Uh, it's something to do with the model. But, moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm hoping to do, oh, this looks promising. Yes. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Uh, it's not super straight. I may need to work something out here. Um, that's also another reason why it's nice that it's nylon because um, it has some right it's totally bulging there you can see it on the edge um, but uh, the idea is that this is now a watering can uh, and I wanted that because I was currently I was currently there's some great English for you I was using my hose to do something today um, water some grass but then also need to do some gardening farming kind of stuff and uh, so um, it's got a bit of glue on the bottom I'll clean off later y'all aren't watching this to uh... one sec while I Put my phone on sleepy time. <clears throat> oh man. Uh, one second. There we go. Then we're going to say back to here. Ka chow. Sorry about that. 
Um, so anyhow, uh, it's just been, it's just been one of those times. Um, I actually have on my whiteboard, I have a number of video ideas uh, that kind of came to me around a series of uh, ideas and things. And so I'm, I'm actually kind of excited for that. Um, but again, that's going to be using a camera, pre-recording it, and getting that stuff going, which I very much enjoy doing. Um, I really find that the toughest part for me about videoing things is having having a a topic or an item that I am passionate enough about uh, or about which I am passionate enough I think that's better grammar that it drives me to finish the thing uh, if, <laughs> if you could see I have I have random odds and ends right like fun little like 3d printed things that I've 3D printed, I've got random, you know, here's a piece of, uh, I think there's a piece of obsidian. I thought, man, that would be cool to make a, make an arrowhead out of and, you know, make some primitive arrow and I've just got all sorts of knickknacks and doodads and I think what it really comes down to is I have shiny thing syndrome <laughs> so it's it's tough to uh, uh it's tough to know where to dive in and to what degree i want to engage on stuff um i i bought this uh cool microphone that you've probably seen before i made this cool microphone mount um i have a cloak over there you know normal normal man cave stuff cloaks you know and um and so it's anyhow it's been on my mind of i want to have something to get back to making regular uh pre-produced or more produced videos because i recognize that um this this live off the cuff thing i i really enjoy doing it um, I like, I love watching the content creators that I enjoy uh, doing it. And I always think, man, if I could, if I could just have a way to talk to them, um, outside of the YouTube chat. <laughs> and so in some ways I wish I could have some of these guys that I really enjoy, um, and have them, <laughs> have them with, uh, one concurrent viewer. So, um, one concurrent viewer, whoever you are, now's now's your chance to have a one-on-one -on -one interview <laughs> with yours truly. So, um, with that, let me clear off some of this random, random detritus, and get some guitar strings. Some family members recently were like, "Here, have some guitar strings." And I said, what are you doing so close to me? Get away from me. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. Um, I did, uh, just on like a note of like my plug for 3D printing technology. I 3D printed this recently. This is like a little buckle. I don't, I don't know if I showed that off before, but man, I am, I'm just loving the idea that like, oh, there's a little wetness. <laughs> How embarrassing. My uh, nozzle peed itself on camera. Um, I'm just loving the idea that, like, I mean, all it takes is time, right? Uh, I think it was like a kilogram of this stuff. Uh, cost me, uh, cost me $30, $25, right? This is nylon, but the cool thing about nylon is that you can like squeeze the crap out of this and deform it I hear a little crack that makes me a little nervous, but you can really like squeeze and bend on this thing and it really does a good job squeezing. Um, this PLA, right, polylactic acid made mostly out of cornstarch. It's a lot more, um, it's, it's a lot harder, um, but it can be a lot more brittle. Um, but I've got things like, right, I've got this, 
This is like a this like printable headphone holder that has like wire organizers and some place to put your uh, put the plugs. Um, I've got another one over here that's holding like a, a heavy helmet um, that I have sitting on the side of my uh, on the side of my desk. And I guess the thing that blows my mind about this is that I got into it for making making miniatures. This was a this was a free miniature that I made recently. Um, this was featured on, uh, maybe if I cover my face. <clears throat> Come on. Come on, iPhone. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. There you go. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's some skeleton knight guy. Um, looks pretty cool. I've printed some fun, you know, fun miniatures and stuff that I, I really dig. Um, this guy's a bit taller. I hate to I hate to be this size and meet this guy. Um, right, I think I show this off and drop it all the time. This is a little um, lizard man thing. Um, I definitely love this little guy, and this is why. Let me hop out of the frame here. Come on, come on, you do it. There we go. Like, I love the detail on this. I, I'm really pleased with this. This is why I got into 3D printing. But to find out that, I mean, to find out, right? To really kind of like grasp and get it a bit more seriously, the idea that you can make something and all it costs you is material and time. And this was something that I'm pretty darn sure I will be able to make daily use of in my family. It will last for a good long while. That's why I chose this material. And the fact that it, like it cost me a few relative cents and is, like I didn't have to pay an additional shipping charge. I didn't have to have anyone additionally ship it right and put like fossil fuels into the atmosphere i didn't have to have additional packaging um or you know like yeah i mean just all all that stuff right i'm not necessarily somebody that uh <laughs> that a younger less sensitive neil would have called an eco freako um but i definitely am somebody who wants to <sighs> I want to help the environment in ways that make sense, right? And getting into 3D printing has kind of opened my eyes to realizing that there's a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of really practical stuff. Um, my 3D printer, as you can see right there, it's not running currently because it makes a little sounds that drive me kind of crazy. Um, but you can, you can see that, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's just a lot of potential there. So, anyhow, um, without further ado, uh, as I did promise uh, that we're going to be painting, we got this little mind flare, um, mind flare guy. So let's get to it. Um, <laughs> I think half the, uh, yeah, half the fun with this stuff is remembering. <laughs> remembering what you used last time. So I was like, yeah, I think that that looks about the purple I used, I guess. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. We had a bright yellow versus a uh, chartreuse yellow. <laughs> so, um, but yes. Uh, let me do this. Going to clear off some space here. Oof. Yeah, oh my heavens. Oh, this is, I guess it's been two weeks since last we talked, huh? Well, life is, life is ever full of uh, adventures. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well in the current state of affairs. Um, 
you know, uh, with the pandemic and all that stuff, uh, there's definitely, we're gonna add some water here. Uh, ooh, apparently we're gonna add all the water in the world. Go, 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 go. Um, If I do this, maybe I won't paint my eyebrows together. Um, but yeah, anyhow, uh, it's been interesting to see. It's been interesting to see my reaction to all this, because in some ways I'm I'm pleased with it, and in other ways, um, I see myself kind of retreating to, well, retreating or at least developing. I don't know um, some bad habits. Right, I, I recently watched a video that um, talked a lot about the idea of um, dopamine and how uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff in our lives. I mean, do dopamine is one of the basic chemicals of your brain uh, and thus is not inherently good or bad. It's, it's just how your brain works, right? Um, there are a lot of things in life that are not necessarily good or bad. Uh, it's more in how how you use them, how they get used. And uh, and so, uh, anyhow, I was watching this uh, this guy's video on dopamine, and and he was pointing out that we have we have a lot of sources of dopamine in our lives um, that don't that don't really take any effort, right? Uh, this, <clears throat> excuse me, this idea of delayed gratification, that uh, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a thing of the past, really. Uh, and, and there's a lot of, I mean, th th think about it, right? Um, th things that I do on my phone um, that I enjoy doing is in it's what I fill my free time with um, I play I play some Hearthstone right uh, a mobile game I'll watch uh, videos on my phone um, I will um, I don't know if you can hear this but uh, clearly there is beauty all around when there's love at home. Um, but, uh, you know, I there's just a lot of things you can do, right, to uh, have a very quick, like, kind of like shot of dopamine. And uh, it's interesting because you look at these things and they're not all, like, they're not all bad, right? I mean, as, as I watched this guy's video, um, he, he talked about some things like, uh, in, in order to have like a dopamine, you know, detox was what he was calling it, right? He was saying like, um, like you need to avoid uh, gambling and pornography and uh, some of the things that come along with that. And I'm going that I, I don't watch pornography. Um, I think that that, uh, that goes against my values, um, and and I definitely I think I already kind of see how that could be definitely a uh, a trap, um, and instead of seeking to better myself to promote uh, lasting romantic relationships, um, I might be tempted to um, you know go with something that uh, would be easier. And I, I mean, I realize this will be a perhaps a hot button topic depending on your view of uh, of such things, and and that's I mean that's cool. Welcome welcome to life, right? It, we don't have to agree on everything. That's fine. Um, but I feel pretty strongly about this, um, and yet as you know, as I'm like reading through the list and going like, oh my, I'm I'm so good because you know I don't I don't look at the prawns. Um, at the same time, his his other thing of like. But do you watch TV? Like, are you watching TV because because it's uh, truly valuable and truly like you know building something, or are you watching it just because it's like a super easy 
um, you know, again, how he, how he phrased it, like hit of dopamine. Um, I think he phrased it that way. Either, either that or I'm phrasing that way and uh, copyright Neil Older 2020. Um, but as, as I thought about this, I, I know some people that when they watch movies and TV, um, for them, it's a, it's a study. Right. Uh, these are these are like the great like filmmakers. Uh, these are people I know that are very much into uh, storytelling, and uh, and so when when they watch these things, um, their focus is that uh, you know their their focus is that they're um, they're learning, they're studying, they're they're actively participating in what they're viewing so as to really um, capitalize on the time. And yet, there are other times, and I'm sure this has got to be, I mean, maybe even they do it, right? Uh, where they're just more a passive participant, and their goal isn't so much to learn from anything. Um, it's just more just to, to just kind of say, hey, I'm just, uh, just kind of vegging out. Uh, there's not necessarily anything inherently, um, like dramatically, just like the most evil thing you can imagine about vegging out. Uh, and again, that's where maybe the analogy with something like pornography or something, uh, for me personally, breaks down because I, I think that stuff is inherently evil. Um, but I digress. Uh, but it was really like this idea of uh kind of kind of what i'm terming like nickel and diming myself out of an opportunity uh i recently talked with uh, my financial advisor which sounds a lot fancier than than i suppose i mean it makes me sound like you know i'm warren buffett or something <laughs> far from the truth um but i but i have enjoyed uh working with a financial advisor um just because it's uh, it's helped me to be a bit more accountable um, to some of my uh, long-term financial goals, and uh, and part of this discussion that we had was that um, my wife and I realized that uh, we have some different. Well, we we have some goals about like our living space and financial goals and stuff. Um, a lot of that's in the air because of the state of the world right now we'll see um but at least barring you know barring catastrophe we'd like to start saving um to kind of maybe uh kind of switch around some of our some of our long-term uh you know maybe like housing or remodeling or you know i mean stuff like that right and as we talked about this uh we realized that you know we probably could get serious about paying down some of the debt, you know, credit card debt that we've been lazy and have accumulated. It's not bajillions of dollars. Um, nor is our, nor is our desire to save uh, money on like a, you know, monthly basis. Th that's not, oh yes, we'll put away a hundred thousand dollars a month, right? No, no, no. It's, it's just more that we looked at and we realized we're spending you know, uh, 10 bucks here, 10 bucks there, you know, five bucks here, five bucks there. And pretty soon you're going, yeah, I don't know that that was, that was like me saying like, eh, I'm having a bad day. So I'm going to go buy a soda from the, you know, soda store. That makes me sound really old or something. Uh, certainly out of touch. Uh, but like it, it's this idea that we are nickeling and diming ourselves out of longer term financial uh, goals. And so as, as I thought about this and then thought about kind of these like life changes, right? Uh, and, and that's what got me thinking about this like dopamine idea and, and kind of led me down this path of watching this guy's video. Um, it was thinking about this, this sense of it's so easy to just to just fill our times uh fill our time right because we have there there are there are actually tens of thousands of people 
collectively engaged to to capture your attention think think about facebook think about youtube think about the the algorithms involved there um it's not always some you know some malicious pernicious evil like ah ha ah, ah, ha they're trying to uh, subvert your mind and turn you into some, you know, like sheeple. Like, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even saying that, right? Just think of marketers, right? Their job is to say, well, what seems to be tracking well? What resonates well with people? I, I, I work for a small company that even something as simple as A/B testing um, the landing page was enough to be able to say, hey we notice that we have an a b test here and we change the like the big action button the click here to sign up for our stuff when we change it from from blue to green we got a 30 percent increase on you know like people clicking through cool right and that's not some sort of oh man like the illuminati's controlling your brain that's just a simple they figured out that for whatever reason the people they were advertising to, it resonated more with them to have a green button than a blue button. And then to think about all that and think that scaled up to the money that big tech corporations and big advertising corporations, right? Think of think of Coca-Cola. Think of, uh, I mean, you know, soda companies, sports brands, uh, major league sports brands, like all that stuff. There are agencies and teams at those companies engaged in trying to separate you, if not from your money directly, they're trying to separate you from your time. And this is not inherently evil, right? I'm, I'm actually kind of a big fan of capitalism. I think, like, you know, not crony capitalism where you get, like, the government involved and people have to, like, learn which government officials to, like, grease the palms of to... Uh, okay. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just saying, uh, trying to, you know, compete in a marketplace and find out what people want and then delivering to that. Wonderful. I, I think we've got a lot of innovations. I'm recording right now on an iPhone, on a computer, uh, on like YouTube, on a microphone. Like I, I could look around and see a lot of benefits um, to people having to fight in a marketplace, right? This microphone company, Deity, I really like this microphone. And the thing that I like about it is that they're able to deliver a microphone for, yeah, $300. So $300 mic, I realize that's not a $3 mic, but to get this kind of performance before these mics came along, it was like, a, it was like, a, I don't know. I mean, it's like a $600 endeavor, a $1,000 endeavor, right? That's kind of cool, right? I really do like that. Uh, clearly, I'm painting a lot right now with my hands. <laughs> uh, so my, my point being that it's not evil that people are trying to separate you from your money or your time, right? In a, in a moral way. But it is easy enough to start allowing things to separate us from our time and not realize that we are in small nickel and dime increments, giving up on bigger goals. That is very easy for me to do. I am highly distractible, as you might just maybe have kind of put your finger on <laughs> as you've watched my videos. Uh, it works in some formats, right? I like to think that uh, it's a little bit a part of my <laughs> It's a little bit part of the je ne sais quoi of uh, the allure of Neil Oler, I suppose. Um, but as I, you know, as I think about some of my goals and think about some of the things I'd like to accomplish in the next uh, few months or years or whatever, you start to look at this stuff and go, w wait a second, wait a second. What, what am I doing, right? How, how am I getting any closer to this stuff? than I was before. And then you start to realize, well, shoot, I'm not getting closer. And then where, where's this time going, right? Uh, 
and not because not because I am uh, wasting it in some gigantic or uh, overtly um, amoral way, but perhaps just because I am nickeling and diming myself out of these things that I say are more important, but that I'm not actually doing what needs to be done to reach them. So as I thought about this, and thought about the concept of, uh, you know, uh, dopamine um, production. Because uh, again, dopamine is just a, a natural reaction. Um, we get we get dopamine when, um, I mean, I should look it up. I'm no neural scientist. I'm no uh, brain doctor. Um, but dopamine seems to be when we, like, the, when we eat like a calorie rich meal, dopamine is what triggers in our brain to be like, mm, yeah, like, like that kind of stuff. Whereas, um, <laughs> uh, Simon Sinek, right. Uh, a famous kind of like business, um, leader, motivator guy recently pointed out and said, um, if we have, well, wasn't him. Maybe I'm getting my sources mixed up. Someone recently said, sorry, wish I had the, uh, the source, but regardless of the source, I think the principle is true. Um, but, uh, oh, Ryan, I'm seeing you. Uh, so often we see commercials that we hate or internet ads that bug us, but every once in a while I see that ad and think, I want that. It makes me glad for advertising. Right, right, exactly. Right, uh, it's only when I... I had to like, I'm not even sure. And maybe this is revealing something terrible about me. I, I hope not. I can't remember why it would be, but, uh, somehow on, on YouTube, it like got onto this thing of like, Hey, like you want to play those like, like sexy time games and like you know, it's stuff that like, again, not, I don't imagine the most hardcore of porn sites, etc. get to just advertise with impunity on YouTube. I would, I would hope not. Um, but still stuff that I'm going like, I wouldn't play that because I wouldn't play that. So why the devil am I getting like advertised to? It was weird, right? Uh, so that's definitely like, <laughs> I do not want that. Um, but I, at least when I see like audio um vloggers right guys who are into like the microphone space and they're advertising microphones i totally want to see that not because i go out and buy every microphone but because i love to see the content i love to see the um like i love to see the competition in the marketplace right people trying to figure out how we make better microphones for less money so i mean it's it's totally good stuff um advertising is definitely part of that like big equation. So yes, totally agree with you, Ryan. Um, but, but as I thought about like the idea of dopamine sources, right? Um, it's not bad to eat a tasty meal and have your brain go, Hey, dopamine, like, here you go. Right. More of that, please. The trouble comes when we say that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to just sit here and eat like a ton of like cheesy hamburgers because I like that dopamine response. I think two reasons, right? One, our brain gets dulled to the current reception of dopamine. So maybe we try to get a little bit more or at least like the, uh, you know, the other thing is who wants to be sitting around eating like greasy, like calorie rich hamburgers all the time. I love hamburgers. I had some uh, delicious chicken wings that my wife made for dinner and they were, they were great. I honestly have never been into chicken wings and I think I ate I ate enough that I'm embarrassed to tell you the about. Uh, so like, okay, fine, right? We, we all have those like, mm, I want the candy bear, candy bar kind of thing. But especially when it comes to how we use our time, right? Are we, are we studying? Are we learning? Are we trying to better ourselves or better the world around us? Uh, or are we giving in to the easy thing that makes our brain think? Well, I'm kind of engaged, right? I like instead of reading a, a book and really think about what I'm reading, 
I can just watch a show. Or maybe even, I don't know, I mean, there's there's like fluff, you know, fluff books that you can read, right? Um, the, the drugstore novels, right? Like, I don't know what the equivalent is. Uh, there's there's actually some good pulp fiction out there as far as like storytelling and stuff like that. Um, the thing that I keep coming back to in my mind is that it's more about how I approach these things. If I'm watching YouTube, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm seeing Scott just said, I'm using my time to watch someone on the internet. I believe what you Frenchies say is touche. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> very, very true, very true. Um, yes, and I did indeed get these chicken wigs before the shortage of chicken wigs. Good point, Ryan. Um, so, uh, it's just easy to turn on whatever and tune out. And to some degree, that's okay, right? I, I've got kids, I got a day job, I mean, I know the two uh, gentlemen I've been interacting with through the chat, like, you guys have day jobs. And, uh, and you know, and, like, it's totally okay to just have one of those evenings where you're like, shoot, I'm just, I'm done with this crap. I'm going to veg out, right? I get it. This is, <laughs> this is not, this is not to belittle that. Uh it's more just because I am kind of realizing that um, it's why I started doing these streaming things of like painting and doing some of this. It's because it's so easy to get into the mode of consuming other people's creations and feeling like, incorrectly I might add, like you're part of the creation process. It's okay if you're saying, look, I'm hanging out, I'm, I'm supporting my buddy Neil, and I'm watching his video. Wonderful. I really do appreciate that. Do not get me wrong. But I know for me, I can sit there and watch, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking of a couple YouTubers right now. Uh, but as a, a great friend of mine once said, it is a lot easier to think you are getting better at something than to actually get better at it. And so like the painting, right? Uh, what, I mean, I guess to show you, I'm kind of missing my close-up camera for obvious reasons I talked about. I'm just trying to go back over like the purple. Um, yeah, cause I'm trying to get like, it's super dark, but I'm trying to get some even stuff. Uh, <laughs> yes, Scott, I'm glad you could be a part of this process too. And, uh, and let's be honest, I think after this, it would be fun to like play some Terraria or something, right? So like, I, I'm no stranger to fetching out, right? Um, it's just as I've thought about this and thought, uh, what are like my long-term goals, right? What are the, what are the things that really excite me or that I feel maybe is like a, a life calling of mine? Um, something I admire, uh, Scott uh, here in the in the channel. He is a great woodworker. Uh, Scott, I've seen you like consistently like work at that stuff. And again, it, I know life gets busy. I know work gets busy, you know, family and stuff. So like, I understand there, you know, there's like peaks and valleys to that, you know, that graph or whatever. Um, but to me, the overall, like, you're, I think you're pretty darn consistent about that. And that's something that I admire, something that it's easy to look at that and either think, well, I mean, Look, look at that, you know, look at this famous uh, influencer. Look, look at, you know, this like great woodworker. Oh, he's so good at what he does. I could never do it. Or maybe you look at people like that and you get jealous of them, right? And you're like, look at that punk. Like, well, I mean, if I had like 100,000 followers, like I could, I could totally do that too. And yet, what do then I, Neil Oler, go do? Do I say... I'm going to work at it today. I'm going to stream painting of, you know, the Mind Flayer Priest guy. I'm going to uh, write on my right, uh, write on my whiteboard, uh, write on my whiteboard and think about what are some videos that I can make. Do I do that? Or do I just keep going on either saying, gee, it sure would be nice. Or, ugh, I hate that guy. I'm so jealous. 
and then I go right back to like filling my time with just kind of like turn my brain off and, and you know and do nothing right um, I mean this this is kind of turning into uh, somewhat the uh, somewhat the presentation I made and I post a video on my channel um, but uh, basically um, it's just so easy to get like either apathetic you know jealous in some way or uh, or at least just like so like starstruck or enamored or something I, I don't know uh, but you get to the point where you're just like gee like how do I go from little old me to you know insert fame and fortune and like stuff like that there's no secret process, right? The, that silly meme that's like, step one, desire something. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit, right? Like, okay. The, the recipe as far as that simple, I don't know if it exists. I do imagine that the question mark is much more in the execution and in the daily consistent execution. Um, this is something that I did watch recently from uh, the Simon Sinek guy where he talked about how uh, he, was, he was talking about leadership, right? And that there are lots of things that leaders do at like a company that don't seem like they immediately in and of themselves in that moment benefit the bottom line, right? When you, um, when you say hi to someone at your company, Right, you you walk in the door and you hi, say hi to the receptionist, or the um, you say hello to a, a team member, you know whatever. It's not like then you can like quickly look at your phone and go, aha, stock went up five cents, ding, like that's the bottom line, right? You can't trace it to that, but that repeated over and over and over leads to an overall positive increase in morale. And so in the same way that, uh, you know, the Simon Sinek guy points out that like, you can't necessarily find where the like graph of like love between like, you know, a spouse, significant other, whatever, like goes from like zero to like ding, you know, like a hundred percent, right? It's much more this like gradual untraceable thing that eventually the person kind of says, I think I've realized it for a little while now, but I really love this person. But that's because there was a consistent series of behaviors that were repeated, right? The person consistently showed empathy and showed compassion and showed putting that person's needs and desires above his or her own, right? And so it kind of comes together as this big, like, at any one moment in the timeline, you can't point your finger at it and say, give me the percentage of love involved in this equation, right? But you can overall look back and say, I see where we traveled with this. So I don't know, it's, it's just so fascinating to look at this and just think like, I, I've got things that I, I feel like I want to like, speak my mind on right things from um i don't know i mean like <laughs> this pandemic thing has definitely made me think about um personal preparedness uh i've certainly had my weaknesses of um you know d daily habits and uh and the behaviors that i'm engaged in again nothing like oh whoops yeah i keep killing people on a daily basis like no it, it, it's not something giant like that for me i i imagine most people it's not going to be giant for but i have seen where because i'm i'm stressed i'm tired i'm frustrated um it's easy to you know kind of have a veg out moment but then never really step back away from that and to kind of say well wait a second just like my wife and I going, hey, if we want to like move to a different house or, you know, or remodel or I mean, whatever it is, we could be trying to figure out ways to save money right now and, you know, put that money away. Or we could just kind of keep going, eh, whatevs, and, you know, buy a little here, buy a little there. And then in five years time go, 
Well, we said this was a goal of ours. We said that we wanted to, uh, you know, we, we wanted to like save up money. How's that, how's that saving going? <laughs> and then to, to look at our bank accounts and go, oh yeah, nothing. Like <laughs> there's no money in there, right? And so the same way uh, with our time right that uh with our time right and so like i'm i'm a big fan of trying to avoid like the bombast of like the like the you know like today in one fell swoop you are going to be amazing uh that i think is one of the biggest life lessons of painting things that i think i've learned is that most of the time along the way like that <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a five-year-old did it like that's not that great looking uh that's that's why in some ways right i laugh about like come watch paint dry with neil oler but this is not going to be the most scintillating just uh play by play second by second exploding skyscrapers worth of entertainment uh and that's why i tend to enjoy talking during it <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob Ross style, right? Um, but it's great to be able to see when you're all done with the piece, um, right? Let, let me let me get a piece that I I still I'm super proud. Of. So this is, I mean, I, I posted this on Instagram, anyone that's followed me there and everything, like you've seen it a million times. Um, but to me it like, right? Like I'm, I'm very pleased with how this came out. Um, I love that like we got like the shading and the depth. This was kind of my first time of making like a, a base uh, and figure out how to like put sand and you know, these little like, I don't know. I mean, and in the end, as a dragon made out of plastic, right? Um, it's certainly not the world's greatest dragon that has ever been painted. I have seen seen way better stuff, but for me, right, and my ability uh, to see where it started out uh, and the things I learned in printing it, right, on my 3D printer and painting it and sealing it, you know, all, all the stuff, I am, I am really pleased. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I I am really pleased with how this came out, and. And yet, I could tell you from first-hand experience, <laughs> there was a point where I think I had painted the dragon, like, all red, and I let it sit there for a couple weeks uh, until my wife was basically like, you should go finish that thing. I'm like, but I don't, I don't want to. Like, I'm worried that it looks bad now, and I'm worried that I'll screw it up even more, right? And so it was basically like one of those lo loving... <laughs> <laughs> loving spousal things where she's just like, dang it, like you get back on the horse and you keep riding. And and now, now that it's done, I'm very happy with it. I'm I'm very happy it came out. Most painter guys that I've watched say like, dude, until you until you reach the I don't know, and until you reach like the the ninety fifth percentile of it being done and you start to see like the shading and the depth and you know and like the um, the the fading between colors and gradients and stuff until you see it all come out like it all kind of looks like butt like it all kind of looks bad and if if I were to have sat down and said it looks like this and so while in my head maybe something like this existed right I, these, these colors weren't random I, I picked the colors out but if I said I'm never going to get there so why try? Or if I would have said, eh, I mean, like someday the dragon will be painted someday, someday, or I'm too scared to keep painting because what if I mess up, right? All these reasons that like stop us from making small but meaningful everyday kind of progression uh, or, you know, every week, right? I mean, again, I haven't touched this guy for two weeks. Sometimes that's how life goes. Cool, what else? Um, it's just interesting to look at that and really realize that, uh, while a lot of our circumstances may vary greatly, obviously, across the pantheon of, of human experience, uh, 
I still really believe that each of us can really sit down and think and say, my children are loud, number one. <laughs> number two, that uh, what, what am I really doing with my time? And um, yeah, uh, I don't know. It, it's just something that has really been impressed upon my brain and and I've really been sitting there struggling, thinking like I've got I've got these like these things that I like and these these thoughts and messages I want to like get out to the world. Um, I still don't know that I have the world's uh, best laid out plan to accomplish some of these things. But as I've thought about them and realized that instead of waiting around for the perfect plan. Um, executing on them when they are decent enough to to actuate on oh, that's that's been highly motivating um, so uh, yeah uh, I yeah I suppose, uh, actually, as far as like, <laughs> my wife is now calling my kids Stinky McGee's. Don't know what that's about. Um, <laughs> I should, I should at least share it on my Instagram or something, uh, that recently had a pipe break, uh, happen upstairs in a bathroom and it caused a caused it a cave-in of the ceiling in the downstairs bathroom so that was that was frustrating um, luckily we were able to get a uh, wise and talented plumber guy to come out and uh, socially distance but still be able to save us because you know um, <laughs> I think I showed uh, I think I showed you Scott that uh, it was uh, Basically, I was showering out of one of those like camp showers that you use the sun to uh, heat up the water. <laughs> it wasn't great. So, um, anyhow, uh, the next thing I want to figure out on this guy, I I want to figure out um, I want to figure out skin color. Um, let me actually do 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 do. Ooh, let's turn on. Uh, let's turn on this. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, I'm going to turn this a little lower. I just want to find a good um, mind flare. It'll probably show you. Yeah, there you go. Um, yes, the illithid. Um, well, cool, what else? Um, so as we see here, right, like the Mind Flare, it's, it's a classic Dungeons and Dragons uh, guy. And I had in my head like purple and yellow for, um, for the clothing. But now I'm a little worried that maybe like it will kind of offset. But I don't know, like the skin seems to be blue enough. I don't know. It's uh, at least looking around me. I don't. I don't immediately have uh, have the right kind of uh, blue um, able to be grabbed. So I don't know that uh, that's kind of kind of be my homework for uh, for the next little bit. And as I think about how to uh, go about, because um, I've found that starting uh, brighter, and then as you go, you can kind of work up with lighter colors, and especially for painting like ridges, right? To give kind of how. Um, well, I wish I had a good example of something uh, with like, well, I don't know, like this uh, this flashlight, right? So as you look at the edges, right, you notice like there's some like wider lines here on the edge and wider lines on the top. You know, that's where you can work up to like a lighter line uh, to get that looking like that. So um, still working on the color scheme there and I'll keep working on. Um, but uh, I definitely want to thank... Uh, 
yeah, I definitely want to thank Ryan and Scott. Uh, really great uh, to have you guys. I really appreciate you guys participating in uh, the chat. Um, <laughs> this this certainly was less painting than I guess I was thinking I was going to do, which, I don't know, in the end, again, I don't have the thing I want to color the skin with, so <laughs> maybe that's a good thing for the best. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I hope this was, uh, enjoyable, useful, uh, if, if it was for you, just the, like, turn off your mind and enjoy the sweet and sultry tones of Neil Oler coming to you live, then that's okay, too. You're not the first person to, uh, to give into the siren song of these dulcet tones. But, um, yeah, I want to definitely thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, we will, this will be like the, <laughs> at 57 minutes, this will be one of the quicker live sessions I have done in a while. Um, but yeah, we'll call it good there. Um, so yeah, you guys have a great evening, and I will see you the next time I see you.